truth is it's all about light. When you're using a scope, it's about getting the light to you. How much light do you get? It's called light transmission. Now, Tim, it's a very simple subject, right? No, oh, absolutely. No, it's not at all. <laughs> so, all right, we have three different tube diameters, but light transmission is a whole lot more than tube diameter. Right. In fact, tube diameter doesn't really affect light transmission. Nor really? does nor does objective size. What? Nope. That's, that's what I've been told. Well, and, and it's a little more complicated than that because you get to the larger objective scopes and they actually have an extra lens in them, like a 50 millimeter have an extra lens, and an extra lens means less light transmission. Well, every time you add a piece of glass, <laughs> yep. it's absorbing a little bit of the light. Yes, it's a so very small amount. The few, Because you've got several different pieces of glass called elements in here, mm -hmm. and every time you add something, then the light has to penetrate that piece of glass. Exactly. So light transmission is affected by how much light gets through each piece of glass, Right. how much, how many pieces of glass are in the scope, and it's also affected by glare, but it's actually negatively affected by glare. Right. And the coatings on the pieces of glass that allow the light to go through as opposed to being reflected back out. Exactly. So there's a lot of things, and those are the things you don't see when you go into a store. And people say, well, I, you know, I, they all look good in the store, don't they? Right. I mean, they do. They all look good they in the store. Do. And so when does that kind of quality construction and design pay off for you? Well, you've got to be careful of a few things. One is some of the light transmission numbers that are being given now by competitive scopes are only talking about one lens. Yeah, it's a little bit of a cheat. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're getting light transmission numbers throughout the scope. Okay. Uh, you also want to pay attention to or ask the question of what nanometer of light they're measuring at. So we came out with a standard underneath the, there's a bell curve that describes the human eye's ability to see Nanometer is basically the color of light. Yes, the yeah. wavelength of light. Right. So the humans can see uh, under a bell curve uh, of light. On one end is infrared and on the other end is ultraviolet. Right. And so you want to make sure that... Uh, you're getting a light measurement that is in a realistic place. In other words, if they're giving you light transmissions in infrared or ultralight, it doesn't do you any good. Do any good. <laughs> we came up with an industry standard a while back to actually take an average of light transmission underneath that bell curve. Okay. So you just want to make sure that they're actually giving you numbers underneath the bell curve. Somewhere. All right, question then. If the tube diameter doesn't determine the light transmission, how bright an image is, right. why do we have different tube diameters? Well, there's a couple different reasons. One, you know, you, okay, this, us, is the, this is the traditional one inch tube. One inch tube. So this is United States. Everything is standard measurements. Uh, one reason to go to a 30 millimeter is you're going, you're, you're selling to a European market, and they like to see things in millimeters. So okay. 30 makes a good size. All right. This is. That's 30 millimeters. This is 30, and this is a one inch. And here's your 34. At the 34 inch. Now, when you look at that, you think, okay, this one's got to be better in some form or fashion. We find that as you get larger in tube diameter, the, the tube gets a little stiffer. Uh, I don't know if there's a, an appreciable difference in that. I don't know if there's an actual payoff for right. it, but I mean, it's there. Uh, but you also get additional adjustment travel within That's the what it's really all about. That's what it? it's all okay, about. Okay, explain yep. that. So when you're, you're inside, there's a tube inside these scopes called the erector system, and, it's, and it holds a bunch of elements of glass like you spoke of. Right. And we actually tip that uh, erector system in order to move the image in order to change your point of aim. So okay. your reticle is actually fixed back here. Okay. So when you when you make adjustments on the scope, you're actually moving the image, not the reticle. So things are moving in here, mm -hmm. and the bigger the tube for adjustments, for long range shooting, exactly. the more range you have for adjustments. Exactly. So in, that, in other words, this, if you're gonna shoot this out at 1500 meters, there's just not enough adjustment in here. No, with this scope, you would probably have to uh, adjust the angle of the scope on top of the rifle with a to... sloped rail. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is really an outgrowth of military requirements. Right, so this, this scope is uh, made for uh, military application. It's mil-mil adjustments, 34 millimeter main tube gives them lots of adjustment ability. So I'm a deer hunter. I'm gonna be shooting out as far as 300, 400 yards in my wildest dreams. Yes. I this is neat. It's cool. If you want it, fine. Okay. But all you really need is, is, a, is a standard one inch tube. Most deer hunters are going to adjust it, sight it in, leave it alone, and never move it again. And even if you're going to adjust for each shot, uh, you're going to adjust out to, I don't know, 400 meters, 400 right. yards. You right. know, so you're going to be out there in the, you know, the 15 minute and less range. So, yes, this is the cool stuff. I call it the NASCAR effect. Okay? Yeah, yeah. You know, the cool guys, the uh, guys in the sandbox use that. 
not necessary for us for most situations. Not necessary. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for explaining that. Absolutely. Anytime.